everybody. I'm Chris Casamassa, and you're listening to The Movie Raid. It's time for The Movie Raid. Tonight's victim is martial artist and stuntman Chris Casamassa has played in Mortal Kombat, Batman and Robin, amongst others. Hello. Hello, hello. What have we been up to? Our Red Dragon Karate Studios in Southern California, and uh, we're opening some new outlets. New martial arts studios out here. We should have three new places open by the end of the year, and I'm getting ready to work on a movie with Jason David Frank, who is the Green Power Ranger, and the new movie is called Legend of the White Dragon, which hopefully starts shooting in the next month or so. If people want to find out information about it, they, there's an Instagram account called Legend of the White Dragon. They can follow it on Instagram, and we'll be posting uh, set pictures and some little sneak peek behind-the-scenes stuff. During the current events, is, is it slowly helping you in terms of between your martial arts and getting work in film? Does it help you benefit for your uh, studios and so forth in martial arts as well to get the work? The funny thing is, most of our students don't even know that I do movies. So they come just because they like the style and, and what we're teaching. And they train with us a few months. They kind of put two and two together and figure it all out. It doesn't benefit the business as much as you would think, which is great because I want them coming to us for who we are, not you know because we were doing movies and stuff. Well, we pivoted very early into the online world. And one of the cool things I like about our company is we really embrace new technology very fast, where a lot of other companies are very reluctant to do that. So in March, when the first shutdowns happened, like we spent literally seven days straight diving in and learning everything about Zoom and the online platform so that in seven days we're actually able to convert a completely in-person business to a completely online business and that really saved a lot of our studios a lot of financial grief because of our quick ability to pivot it's just about learning how to leverage the platform and that's disconnected that a lot of especially martial arts business owners don't have is they don't understand how to use Facebook and or Instagram to generate money without spending any money on it because you me and most people in the world today literally have a TV studio in their pocket. The cameras and the technology that are on today's mobile phones are more powerful than the, the cameras that they were using to run ABC, CBS, NBC just 20 years ago. And now you've got virtual platforms like Facebook, Instagram, Reels, Vimeo, YouTube, where you can launch your own show, your own TV show for free. They don't charge you to do any of that. So if you understand the technology and you're willing to dive in and learn, then you can do pretty well as long as you stay consistent. When you see martial arts, like especially Especially when you get offered work in, in a martial arts type of related film, the value of the martial arts between the actual martial arts deprecated in film, martial arts world, do you think it can be infringed on character as that artist, or do you think it's actually enhancing better in film today? I think any time they, they showcase martial arts in film, it's a win for the martial arts industry because it just continues to make it more and more popular. I mean, even if you look at the Avengers in the Marvel franchise, every one of those superheroes somehow magically has martial arts ability. So they understand thematically and cinematically that having a superhero be able to do martial arts moves makes a lot more sense and is visually way more entertaining than just relying on individual superpower. There are some people out there that get a little bit more in-depth, though, in terms of, like, well, that wouldn't be done with that move or that wouldn't be done. There's some that may feel like they're an expert in that area or people that just think that would be unrealistic. It was actually done in reality, and, and some people actually perform that on camera and say, this is how it's actually supposed to be done and so forth. Yeah, well, I would just say that those people are confused, right? Here's the thing. Movies aren't real, and they do not portray real life ever, unless it's a documentary. Other than that, they're going to do what looks good on camera and what an audience is going to respond to. Will it work in real life? Most of the time, probably not. So there's a practical side that any real martial artist understands and knows intuitively. Like, this is just for camera. And even for me, when, when I'm filming, I have to change how I do my moves because doing a real martial arts move on camera doesn't work. In other words, the camera doesn't pick it up and it reads, even if I'm hitting them, it reads as a miss. So I have to intentionally throw moves wider and farther away than I normally would because the camera doesn't read depth. So real martial arts on camera for cinema doesn't necessarily work. You have to do a thing we call Hollywood Do. There's Kabuto, there's the art of the martial arts, and then there's Hollywood Do. That's fighting on camera. And those are two completely different animals. When someone is not exactly experienced in terms of uh, knowledge in this type of field, would you actually almost prove to other people like this is not exactly the kind of example you want to lead between movies and then the actual arts? Or would you just let the bullets where they fly and then let them deal however they feel necessary? I've never had that experience. Like all the sets that I've been on, the people have been very gracious and willing to learn. Like, you know, once we rehearse some fight scenes, even some of the actors are like, oh, I want to learn how to do that, I want to learn how to do that. So they've always been really cool about it, and it's, it's worked out pretty good so far. Does a martial artist need to uh, put faith 
in the mind or the body when it, when it comes to doing the performance method in terms of what what's really that you need to really put the faith more into, whether the mind or the body, or do you think both is actually the main key? Well, listen, if you're a real martial artist, your mind and spirit are always involved in every part of what you're doing. Choreography on a set, basically a rehearsed dance routine, right? You and the other actor have to know what steps go where and what beats go where so that nobody gets hurt and then it looks good. And then it's up to the music and sound and editing guys to make the fight cut together nicely. So as long as you put your best foot forward, as it were, and give it 100% of your effort, it's always going to translate pretty well on the screen. It's like it's a whole new mindset. Like it's it's a different emotion. It's a it's a whole kind of different set of feelings. As if you were acting, but now you're doing different kind of move set in a similar way, but in a different tone or a different style. Or sometimes you got to mix. It. I mean, there's all kinds of things going on, and having to portray that. And sometimes you might have to focus just the moves and not really think about it at all in terms of mind. Right. That's called motion, which means no mind. So if the rehearsals have gone well, if you've practiced and drilled the moves in, when you're in front of the cameras, it's no different than the rehearsal because how you practice, so shall you perform. And that's why I was saying, I don't know how much of anything you know about the martial arts, but there are these things, these prearranged patterns called kata, which is a series of martial arts self-defense moves done in the sequence. So if you have experience doing that, then learning a fight scene really is just putting a live person in front of you to perform the same routine that you've done a million times. So it makes it fairly easy. The only hard part, like I said, is having to adjust the real moves to the Hollywood moves as you make the different hits on each other. And there are some uh, martial arts, or at least some of them are just kind of part-time, not exactly maybe well-experienced martial arts, at least as in terms of actual performance, but doable, and they, quote, sellable on, on the screen just to, to make the money as compared to real artists. And Do you think there's more or less of those out there right now just to get in the work, or do you think this is becoming more and more presentable as martial arts in, the, in that realm on both worlds? Well, I've been very fortunate to work on sets that only had professionals on them so probably there are people that are just breaking into the business or haven't had that much experience in the martial arts but everybody's got to start somewhere right you no know, you don't start at the top you start at the bottom and you work your way up but that's how you kind of go through that process and, and learn to become better but deprecating the martial arts in film do you think that's more of a good example showing to potential new students to actually learn from you outside of that by watching them on screen or do you think it can transfer us into something a little bit more in depth and just uh, just a learning experience that on its own they don't really have to actually enter a dojo or anything like that no you're not going to get a real martial arts experience on a movie set it's like if you were watching professional wrestling obviously you know people are wanting to go learn how to do moves and, and so forth like that but they try to find some kind of place where they can learn the exact moves and sometimes Sometimes that mentality doesn't really fit the same way because obviously they're going to be disappointed. It's like, no, this is not how you do this way or that way. If you really want to learn it, probably not going to have to watch the movies. I mean, you can enjoy the storyline, but in a way, you're going to have to ignore the, the the fighting sequence if you're really wanting to learn that. Yeah, that's true. Like, if you want to learn martial arts. Go to a martial arts studio. And it's, it's really hard to, to do that for some people, or at least in some areas, and especially culture-wise. In my opinion, I think it's, it's strong culture-wise than it ever has been when it's deprecated in film. Because then, and in some ways, they'll, they'll learn more about that culture because there's so many different styles, so many different techniques, so much of every form of combat. And some of them I've never even heard of, but it does exist today. And it almost seems like a reliable source. Do you think it's a reliable source in film, despite if they're going to learn from that? Or do you think this is more about the fact that it's more thriving as an actual subject? now i think trying to learn martial arts moves from a martial arts movie is probably the quickest way for you to get seriously injured you can go on youtube and type in basic self-defense lessons to watch them there and there are martial arts there's over seventeen thousand martial arts schools in the united states and, and that doesn't even count local recreation centers ymcas youth clubs that teach it for free so the cool thing about the martial arts is it's pretty accessible almost anywhere that you are in the country you just got to look for it and if not you just got to pick up your phone there's like online platforms peloton does a lot of home fitness stuff there's martial arts studios and companies that have apps that you can learn from if you can't get to a studio if you've got an internet or a cell phone connection you at least can get a taste of it or a little bit of trial and error of how to learn how to do some of the moves from a professionally trained instructor if you have to do more of the acting aspect and then less let's say you have to do less of the combat style or everything but you have a little bit of it would you consider yourself on every platform of that or would you actually make sure that you, you are in fact in martial arts you don't want to be quote stereotyped as so and so and so and so if there's people that are doing martial arts they want to get in to the movie business, I'll, I'll give them the same advice that I was given at a very, very early age, and that is very simple. It's very easy for Hollywood producers to take a really good actor and make them look like a martial artist, but they cannot take a really good martial artist and make them look like an actor. 
So if there's martial arts that are trying to break you into the biz, the advice I would give them is to take acting lessons. And that was advice that served me very well uh, early in my career. Now, would you consider that as more of a side thing for you, even since you are uh, purely martial arts and very skilled in this area? Would you rely on, on the film industry as, as your main backup? I'm not saying as a fallback, but as a backup, just to, just as a side thing to, to you could continue to keep learning, learning and even expanding your techniques? The answer to your question is absolutely not. I would never use that as a fallback. The movie business is feast or famine. It's great when it's great, but there are big valleys and gaps between acting jobs and acting gigs. And if you don't have a way to pay the bills between them, then you're going to run into some trouble. There are very few actors that work all the time. For most of us, you get two, three projects in a row, and then you don't work for a year or two years. So it's, that's why I say it's feast or famine. Like within certain areas in the film industry, actor, whether you're some kind of a model expert or something to where you could probably get more projects than normal, that reliability can easily go almost to zero because you're almost going to have to stay outside the film industry because there, there's really no way for you to really expand on your own because the, the, the industry itself is very harsh and it's not going to accept you right away, especially almost on anything unless it's really necessary that they even need you at all. And sometimes it's, it's only on one occasion and you're only there for one day and then you go back home and chances are you're probably not going to get any work for another year because they don't have someone in that particular area that they need right now. Yeah, well, listen, for me, fortunately, the, the offers I get always include some kind of martial arts because they know who I am and what talent they're hiring when they bring me on board. So if, I, if I'm if i working on a project, there's, there's bound to be some martial arts that's going to be in it. Go ahead and plug in any websites or any links, anything that we can check out. I'm pretty easy to find on all the socials, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Snapchat, YouTube, Twitter, you name it. You just type in my name, Chris Castamassa, one S in the beginning, two S's at the end. You'll see all the cool things I'm working on and what we're doing and projects coming up. There you have it, everybody. That is martial arts stuntman, Chris Casamasa. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate it.